is Jesse. We are in the fourth week of June and the 129 millionth week of doing Kidopolis through your screen. Just kidding. I haven't been counting the weeks, but it feels like it's been a while. Um, we, by we, I mean I am going on vacation this weekend and I want you to spend some extra time um, worshiping God to see if you can find a playlist on the internet. On YouTube, there's some really good things. Make up a dance. Um, maybe go out and... Sorry, I have hair in my face. Draw a um, sidewalk on your chalk so your neighbors know that you love Jesus. But first, we're going to briefly go over our lesson, and then you can do that. And I'll go on vacation. It's going to be a really fun weekend. Um, I'll tell you about it next week. Okay, so for June and July, we are talking about faith. Trusting in what you can see, can't see, because of what you can see talked about lots of things that we can see around us, um, works of God, Holy Spirit, um, things that people, things and people that make us feel like Jesus is around us and with us, and that lets us know that we can trust in God, right? This week, our Bible story and our lesson is about knowing how knowing Jesus changes the way that you see others. Um, the story isn't about this, but I'm just going to give an example. So let's say that you're having a hard time um, getting along with somebody. Maybe you and this person just don't see eye to eye about things and disagree about a lot of things. They're not necessarily saying bad things, but maybe they're not things that you agree with, or um, maybe they are. And the way that you can work on that in your heart is maybe it's hard for you not to get angry or frustrated with that person, and that's, that's okay. We all have our feelings, and we all have our emotions you know we talked about that last week and how we can pray to God about it but another thing to remember is that God loves each and every person on this earth who has ever walked this earth and whoever will walk this earth God loves everybody and God sees the worst of people because he sees everything right so if he can see the worst of that person that maybe you don't like like but still love him then you can too. It's really important to remember that God sees something worth loving in everybody. Okay? So, I'm going to take a brief break to grab that paper and then we're going to go over our story. It's a uh, spoiler alert. It's from Acts chapter 10. Okay, like I said, we are in Acts chapter 10. Um, this is after the gospel, right? So it's after um, the Bible talks about the life of Jesus and now it's talking about the acts of the disciples right after Jesus died and how they started to build the church. The church was getting really big. There was a lot of really good things happening. So much excitement. But in this story, we're gonna focus on two people. There's Cornelius and Peter, okay? Peter was building the church. Cornelius, he was a person, he and his family, they liked God, but they weren't Jewish. And at this point, they hadn't heard about Jesus and his miracles. But uh, one day, God sent an angel to Cornelius, and he's like, hey, you need to go find a man named Simon, who is called Peter. Kind of weird, right? Um, he is staying with Simon the Tanner, so it's a different Simon, whose house is by the sea. Um, so Cornelius sent two of his servants off. Now, meanwhile, back at the ranch, and by the ranch, I mean the house by the sea, Peter um, was, let's see, what was he doing? He went up to the roof to pray. Don't do that. Don't do that. I know it's tempting. It seems really cool. You've probably seen people hang out in roofs on movies. Don't do it. Peter did it. And, um, he started to get really hungry. And while he was getting hungry, a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, mm, mm. No. I am, oh, by the way, he also told, when he said, get up, kill, and eat, there was also visions of all these dirty animals. Remember how we talked about New, New, Testament, New Testament and Old Testament and all the rules of the Old Testament that the Jews followed and how um, Jesus came and maybe it didn't line up with that? Well, here's an example of something that they were being told that didn't line up with the Old Testament, their Jewish lifestyle that they knew. Um, the voice, the, the voice said, 
get up, kill, and eat, and it pointed to all these animals. So, for example, um, pigs were like the dirtiest of the dirty, and they weren't allowed to eat pigs. So let's, for example, say pigs were in that vision. And Peter was like, no way, Jose, I am not eating that. I am Jewish, and that is what we do. But then the voice spoke to him a second time and said, do not call anything that God has made unpure. Okay? So, while Peter was wondering about the meaning of that, by the way, that happened three times, um, the, the man sent by Cornelius, remember he sent his soldier, his servants out there? Um, they were asking for a man called Peter. And, by the way, there was, some, there was other weird rules that had to do with Jewish people and not Jewish people. They couldn't go into each other's houses. Um, I think non-Jewish people were allowed in Jewish people's houses, but not the other way around. If you were Jewish, it wasn't okay for you um, to go into a non-Jewish house. That was not okay by God. Um, but the men were like, hey, there's a man named Cornelius who wants to see you. An angel said, you have to come. So Peter went. And Peter is kind of confused right now, right? Because first God is telling him, eat these unclean animals. And now he knows a little bit about Cornelius. And he knows that he's probably not Jewish. So I bet you he's thinking about it on that whole journey over there. So what Peter realized was that Jesus changed everything. God told him about the animals and um, when he about eating the unclean animals that nothing God made was unpure. So therefore, a non-Jewish man could not be unpure and his house could not be unpure for him to enter. There was a lot of stuff that Jesus changed when he came and that was shown when Peter went into Cornelius' house. The neat thing about that is that Peter told Cornelius everything about Jesus, about all the works that he did, the miracles that he performed, about how he died for his sins, our sins, your sins, everybody's sins on the cross, even though he was completely pure, wonderful, and perfect. But then, also about the miracle of how he rose from the dead and came back to still walk among us. Guess what happened after that? Can you guess? Cornelius and his family became believers. They were baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit, and do, 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 they were praising God. He ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. How cool is that, okay? So there was these rules back in the Old Testament that remember Jesus changed everything. We talked about that in weeks before. Jesus changed everything. One of the things that Jesus changed that maybe Peter needed God to actually tell him, and he did, was that nothing that the Lord makes is impure. And because of that realization, Cornelius and his family, and then probably so many families around Cornelius, and so many families after Cornelius, like his grandsons and their grandsons, became believers. And that was just all the more people that could spread the word of God. So please, don't ever think that anybody isn't worth telling about Jesus, because everybody is. It is so important. It says right here in Acts chapter 10. So now you're going to watch the So and So show, and I so hope that you have so much fun. Hello, kids. It's time for another rousing game of Where's Brando? See if you can help me find him. Ha <gasps> ha! Is Brando underneath this chicken? No, he is not! Is Brando next to this table tennis court? No, he is not! Is Brando underneath this desk? No, he is not! Is Brando hiding underneath this robot helmet? Mm. No! No, he is not! Where is Brando? Seriously, where's Brando? Yes. Hmm. Ah! Coconuts, am I right? I'm Brandon. Uh, and I'm John, and welcome to the So-and-So Show. Popsicles. Am I right? Brandon, Brandon, what are you doing? 
Where did, where did you get that popsicle? Oh, Longbeard Carl left it in the studio a couple weeks ago. What are you doing now? Just enjoying the summertime, my friend. Yeah, but you don't need sunscreen inside. I know, but don't you just love the smell of it? It's like the smell of summer. Uh, see? Ugh. Ugh. Does it's, that smell like summer? No, it smells like my Aunt Agatha's beach house. Oh, what's the difference? Hey, what's, what's the, the difference? difference? What's the difference? So, in this game, we're going to see two photographs that look the same, but really aren't. Yep, and whoever finds what's different first wins. Oh, 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 oh I'm so going to win. I wouldn't be too sure. Uh -huh. Let's go. All right. Ah, uh, summer. That's what my arm smells like. Mm -hmm. We look like we're having a good time, John. Yeah, but these photos look exactly the same. I can't see anything that looks... Uh, uh, no. Wait. Got it. On the left picture... There's a sun in the sky, and there are people playing in the water. And on the right picture, it has no sun, and there are no people in the water. Oh! Well, good observation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next photo. Cool, now we're at the pool. I could sure use a dip right now. What about you, John? No time. Focused on the game. Sure. Hey, but don't forget to have fun. It's only a game. Oh, in the first photo, my face is sometimes sad, sometimes angry. In the second photo, my expression is more perplexed and pensive. Oh! Wow. That's a very subtle difference. Yeah, there's nothing subtle about it. Next. Uh, looks like a good day for a picnic. <laughs> Concentrating. 13, 14, 15. What are you counting? The blades of grass in each picture. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's going to take you all day. 22. Can't we just look for Got something? Got it! In the right photo, I am smiling slightly wider than in the left photo. What? No, no, zoom in to a close up. See? In this one, I'm like, and in this one, I'm like, like that. they're different. Or, there are clouds in the photo on the left, but no clouds on the right. Ha! Oh, man. And the winner is John. <laughs> oh, yes, best two. Why? That was best two out of three, buddy. So why'd we even do the third photo? You'd already won. I know. I just I love winning. <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Bible stories are so fun. I get to tell them to everyone. Hey, 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 hey. Hey guys, um, what's up? Hey Kellen! Yeah, sounded good, Kellen. Thanks. Hey, what's the story about? Today's story is about the time when Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, met Cornelius, a commander in the Roman army. And here to help me tell the story are the so-and-so show players! <laughs> I am so and so excited. Can we play the game again? This story happened sometime after Jesus had died and come back to life, which, by the way, is still an amazing thing to think about. It was so amazing that many people believed in Jesus just because of what they heard about him. But here's something you may not have known. Many Jesus followers at the time thought you had to be Jewish before you could follow Jesus. In fact, there were laws that said Jewish people and non-Jewish people, or Gentiles, couldn't even hang out together. So our story begins in the home of a Gentile, the Roman commander Cornelius, about three o'clock in the afternoon. I wonder what time it is. I'm guessing three o'clock in the afternoon, huh? Hey, that's right. Cornelius. Whoa, what is it, Lord? Your prayers and gifts to poor people are like offerings to God and he has remembered you. <sighs> Send men to Joppa and have them bring back a man called Peter. Okay. 
<laughs> so Cornelius sent three men to Joppa to find Peter. Around noon the next day, Peter was on the roof praying when he got really, really hungry. Lord, you are faithful. I pray that you... Whoa, I'm hungry. I wonder if lunch is ready yet. Whoa, I'm hungrier than I thought I was. Peter had a vision. He saw something like a sheet being let down from heaven. Ooh, where are we? I think we're on this guy's roof. Hey, who is that guy? In his vision, Peter saw animals of all kinds in the sheet. They probably weren't talking animals, but they were the kind of animals that would have been against the law for Peter to eat. As Peter watched, he heard a voice. Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. What did that voice say? Kill and eat. Oh. Wait, us? No, Lord, I won't do it. I I've never eaten anything that isn't pure and clean. Do not say anything is not pure that God has made clean. Whose side are you on here, vision voice? The vision was repeated three times. Oh. 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 Oh, I'm dizzy and confused. Are you going to eat us or not? Then the sheet was immediately taken back up to heaven. Hang on. No! What could this vision mean? At that very moment, the three men Cornelius sent to find Peter arrived. And the next day, Peter went with them to Cornelius' house. You're here. Oh, stand up. I, look, I'm a human being, just like oh. everybody else. I've brought all of my family and all of my friends to hear what you have to say. Go on, say hello, everybody. Hello, hello Peter! Uh, hello, everyone. It's, it's nice to meet you. Um, you know it's against our law for me, a Jew, to enter the home of a Gentile or to even be close to one. But God has showed me that I shouldn't say that anyone is unclean. And that, that's why I'm here. I, I realize now that God treats everyone the same. He accepts people from every nation who have respect for him and do what's right. Peter told them all about Jesus, and he told them how anyone who believes in Jesus, Jew or Gentile, will be saved. While Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit came on everyone in the house who heard the message. Yeah. Hallelujah! This is the best day of my life. I forgot to change my costume. Oh, man. Well, surely no one can keep these people from being baptized. This is the best day of my life. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. I did it! Thank you! Thank you! Not sure baptism worked like that back then, but everyone who believed in Jesus was baptized that day. After staying with Cornelius for a few days, Peter left to spread the word that faith in Jesus wasn't just for people like him, but for everyone. The end. That's a great story, Kellen. Yeah, and well done, so-and-so show players. That was so cool. But, but I'm wondering, uh, would we have ever heard about Jesus if Peter hadn't had that weird vision? That's a really good question. Before that vision, Peter thought Jesus was only for people who were the same as him. Yeah, but now we know Jesus came for everyone, even different people like us. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we are way different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Doesn't matter where you were born or the color of your skin or how different you are. We can put our faith in the same Savior. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. Thank you, Kellen. Thank you, guys. I'll see you next time. Hey, bye, Kellen. Man, I really love that. No kidding. The so-and-so show players are the best. Mm -hmm. Reveal the question. Oh, hey, what are some ways people are different from each other? Yeah, it could be the way people look. Oh, like hair color or nostril shape. Mine are crooked. Oh, how about that? Yeah, or it could be other things too, like uh, what subject in school people are good at or how many brothers and sisters people have. Yeah, the possibilities are pretty much endless. Yeah, so you guys talk it out. What are some ways people are different from each other? And 
We will see you next time. Yes, I am John. And I'm Brandon. And this was the So and So Show. <laughs> Are we different from each other? I, pretty, yeah, we're very different. You think so? How? Yeah. I love Jesus. He's so cool. Yeah. Do do out of the Bible. It's so cool. I get to tell it after school. Psych at church. It's so cool. Can I finish a minute? Let me dance. <laughs> You guys know the drill. What comes after the so and so show? Hopefully you're still here. Are you still here? Hello? Okay, I'm still here, so I hope you're still here. We're gonna do the memory verse. It is from, does anybody remember? I do, Hebrews chapter, I, I looked, but I remembered, I remembered before, I swear. Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. Okay, so we have our junior varsity level, and then we have our varsity level. Where are you at? If you are junior varsity, and you're not quite ready to do this whole verse, listen to this first sentence. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. All right, if you are JV, junior varsity, I would say like kindergarten or lower, somewhere around there, um, maybe just younger than kindergartner, or if you're just a grown up with a bad memory, that's for you. Parents, you're JV. Now, if you are ready to do a little bit more, you're the varsity level. Both get the same prize everybody's equal. Just trying to make it easier for some of my kiddos. Okay. If you're varsity level, you get the whole kit and caboodle, the whole Bible. No, I'm just kidding. The whole verse. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Please memorize that. Memory verses are so great. It's something important because as we talk about God and we talk about Jesus and we talk about the things that he did, it is important to have their word to help people get closer to him. So, as I said, you know the drill. You do your memory verse, you send it to me, and then you get a treat. Treats have not stopped just because I am here and you are there. You will get a treat. I'll make sure of it. Okay? All right. We are going to do prayer time. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for another great week. Thank you for all of the things that you've given us to make our lessons possible. Thank you for the internet, thank you for cell phones, thank you for time, thank you for people who are willing um, to film it and edit it and put it on the internet for us. And thank you for my kiddos and the families who are watching this. I love you guys. Thank you so much, Lord, for them. I am so grateful that we are Oh, learning about you together. Um, I pray that everybody has a safe week. I hope, I pray that my vacation goes smoothly and safely. And I pray that me and my friends get to see each other so soon. Um, we love you so much, God. Pray this all in your son's name. Amen. All right, guys. I am off to vacation, like, literally right now. The car is packed, and we're going to go. See you next week. How long are you going away for? Just two nights. Do you think you packed enough stuff? No, actually we forgot the, their duffel bags. There's more. There's more. <laughs>